they are simply profiting yes, from sorry. exposing Absolutely. the stuff that they yes, want to say to make themselves Megan has a concern just... about the baby's colour was shared with them. They're now speaking about what they experienced. They have an issue about tens it. Tens of millions of dollars. Why they're earning it. it. They're earning it. Whilst, in my view, William and Kate are grafters, Harry and Meghan are grifters. Let's just be clear about that. The way they are behaving is so appalling, and the things that they are doing and the way that they are being manipulated in order to create something, and I'm not going to try and pretend that the Royal Institution is perfect. Of course it's not. There are plenty of things about it which are old-fashioned. Um, rotten, I would say. Rotten. You, you say rotten. Say there are rotten. elements of it which are rotten, are rotten, and I'd agree with you. But what I really find distasteful is that they're not seeking their path through telling future stories and trying to perhaps create a new role for themselves, they are simply profiting yes, from sorry. exposing How the stuff that they change. want to say and to make themselves Megan look has just better. been given an award for her work. The, 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 the one, one for exposing given. racism Jeff in the royal family yes. and the da, da, da. No, I'm yeah. sorry, that's a nonsense. No, it's not a nonsense because it takes courage to do that within an institution. I, yeah. do, I do find, James, that you are a walking contradiction. You've highlighted what is wrong in institution. That is what they experience. They're now speaking about what they experience. They're taking have an issue about tens it. Tens of millions of dollars. Why shouldn't they're they? earning it. They're earning it. Why shouldn't they? Well, they're earning it. Yeah, because they're, they're not they're taking our money. It they're they're no longer secrets. taking our money. How, how is that your problem? It? How are they earning That's it? That's their thing. The same you are earning they're doing something here. and they're being yeah, paid for it. Yeah, and, 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 and I'm sharing my, my story here. And your opinion. And my opinion. And they're sharing their story and opinion. But they've got far more value than you. So they're, they're earning, earning more than you. Not. Sorry about that. So sorry. They're well, earning so more I than do, you. I do, I do have a problem with this because they are earning it. As much as you might not like it, they are earning it. No, I have no problem with them oh, earning you do. money. It's not, it's not, it's not taxpayers' I, money. It's not been handed no, to them. Can, but then, but then leave the entire thing behind them. They have, I have the titles. Fine. They I have. continue to but be... But it is in, theirs. No, truly, they're continuing going to events, left, right and centre, being introduced as the Duke and Duchess because of they are, And they are earning their money by continuously slamming the institution. No, they're earning it's their money James by the value they bring. They're not telling new the stories. They bring they're not to the telling table. new stories. They don't bring they're bring not telling new stories. They're not telling new stories. They're not telling new stories. They're not wow. telling new stories. We're jamming. Shola. We're jamming. Okay. If you are going to make and take money, which they are, out of a system as a result of basically throwing and lobbing bombs in, then I think that you've got but to be accountable for that. you're deflecting and distracting. I'm not. I, I will go straight table. in. Hold on. Everything you've just said now has absolutely jack all to do with why they're doing what they're doing. You they're say, taking no, money. No, no. You're saying they're taking, taking money, money they're and they're it. profiting. <clears throat> because of their position. Well, all of the hate and the death threats and the, 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 the lack of security, all of these experience was because of their position. So you can't say that when they have borne the brunt of some, you know, of abuse, of harassment, they cannot then use that same position to defend themselves. You're deflecting, you're distracting. Focus on the issue. The only reason Harry and Meghan can come out to say ABC happened is because of what was done to them. Every produce from the Queen's loins have all benefited, those we know we don't know of, have all benefited financially from being related to the Queen. So saying that Harry and Meghan, who have bigger exposure, bigger stage, should not get paid for using their voice and time, that's nonsense. No, 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 but what they're doing is they're using their voice not in a way to benefit the institution. They're blowing up the institution. Why should they, the... Benefit, Why the institution? Should they benefit the institution that because treated that's them the so badly. I don't think they did get treated badly. I think it's an absolute nonsense. Sorry, sorry. His mother, Harry's mother, was treated appallingly yes, by that was. institution. Meghan was treated appallingly by yes, that institution. Yes. Actually, Princess Margaret, before she became a drunk, was appallingly treated by the institution. Do not tell me. And, you know, I can't bear Prince Charles, but a part of me also thinks that if only they had allowed them, him, to marry Camilla, Diana wouldn't have died. Do not ball. talk to me about no, this institution. Over well, and then. over, no, over and over again. Charles says to a woman I know, a journalist I know, he says, where are you from? She says, Manchester. You don't look as if you're from Manchester. The Prince Philip, I met him at the Royal Shakespeare Company because I was a governor. I'm standing with my husband. He passes us by, he comes back and he looks at my husband and he says, is she yours? Mm. They are full of it. Mm. And Meghan had to survive it. Mm. 
when a film, yet another film came out about uh, Diana's love affair with a Pakistani surgeon, I then talked to people who were connected, and some of them in Dodi's family, and some of the people in her Pakistani lover's family. And they told me some of the stuff that the royal family was doing because they were appalled that she had two brown lovers. And, and you know, there is a secret service in this country. There are all, and this is what Harry is going to be talking about, the leaking of, of, of information. But the re response to Diana having those two lovers People need to remember that history and that story. Mm, mm, mm. And how I don't think they've forgotten. A I lot of people have. have. No, I don't, so the I racism don't think we're have. talking about... But I, but I'm just Diana didn't have the titles at the time. She didn't have her HRH Why are you title. obsessed with I'm titles? Going to, I'm, going well, to relevant. I'm going to move on from the question that was asked by Lady Hussey to provo probably a much more provocative one, which uh, is the question around skin colour of Archie, which Meghan talked about is that she was asked how, what, what, how basically, how dark is he going to be? Now, is this, ra is this racism? So she wasn't was asked, this... I think that was what was said to Harry, is what she shared during the whole right, interview. Right, sorry, yes. That, that, I think, that, yeah. I think there's, a, there's a really interesting conversation to be had about this, because I think it slightly depends on how you phrase a question. Because I think, as far as I'm concerned, everybody I know who is of either mixed race heritage, uh, and I know quite a lot of um, couples who are uh, from different backgrounds, that a lot of people will ask questions about hair colour, about skin colour, about complexion, whether they be more mum, more dad, more anything else. It, it actually comes down to how it was asked. Mm. Because I think to ask that question um, should, I hope, be quite an innocent one, in the same way that I'm sure that when, when you look at your friends... I'm sorry, when you look at your friends and you say... Say, for example, one of your friends is blonde and one of them's got brown hair... I'm never going to say to them, I wonder what colour your baby's going to be. James, you don't say I do it like that. Say it. I wouldn't even say. I wonder if he'll come. He or she will come out pink between pink or ebony. Or you would never say no, but that. You, you, you would, would never. never no, but I'm not that. saying that. I'm but not that's saying a that. Question that was posed, Harry. It was a concern. It wasn't. It was no. No. Listen, Megan. Listen, Megan and Harry and Harry corroborated this that a concern about the baby's color was shared with him. Concern. Yeah, you before. said the word concern. Concern. And the, and the question it's is... It's an English word. Yeah. That should raise yeah. red flags. Now, I, I agree. If they use the word concern, I am too concerned. That they if are they concerned. Are, that they are concerned. If they are speculating, I think speculating over hair colour or how no, they're going to look no, or the mum or the dad or whatever... The mums and the dads have that right. Nobody else has. It's not about a right. It is no, no. Nobody else can tell me. My mother, my mother would never say, "What color is this baby going to be?" My husband's English. What color? But it's about what's the baby going to be? Okay, all right. Can I give you? Can I give you? I'm sorry. Actually, can I just say, I had this exact conversation with my friend today. So my friend is going through IVF treatment. She has a female partner, and they're going through the process of IVF. And they were telling me today about their sperm donor and she was telling me how their sperm donor is going to be Greek Cypriot and I said to her oh my goodness does that mean the like you you tan very easily as well will this Greek will your baby be uh, will have it will it have olive skin that conversation is very different from concern no but we yeah, don't but know but we, we don't know. know but we no. don't know what Harry the conversation was it was a we, concern yeah but Harry that Harry was there no 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 a lot of things that were you don't know exactly what that conversation was Oh, please, can you heed my warning from before the show? We, can, we need to stop talking over each other. And I was making it's my point until I got this rudely shouted over. Oh, Hello, guys. Welcome back to my channel, Sussex Squad Forever. I am your host, Tyler Audris. And today we dwell on Dr. Shola's perspective on the mistreatment of Meghan Markle. Shola's perspective on the mistreatment of Meghan Markle has fueled heated conversations, as you have heard in the interview, highlighting the troubling issues of racism and sexism that are deeply ingrained within the system of the institution. By drawing attention to the disproportionate scrutiny Meghan has faced, Dr. Shola counters the unjust narratives that seek to criticise Meghan frequently and unfairly.
Through these fiery debates, she passionately argues that Meghan's experiences reflect deeper societal biases that must be addressed, rather than simply dismissed as personal attacks. Dr. Scholar's unwavering support for the Duchess of Sussex provokes much-needed discussions about the inefficiency of power structures within the old institution and the systemic issues that often disadvantaged Meghan Markle as a woman of colour in the institution. Racism and sexism in media coverage The press and the tabloids' treatment of Meghan Markle has been a glaring example of the pervasive issues of racism and sexism that still plague the monarchy. Compared to other members of the royal family, Meghan has faced a disproportionate level of scrutiny, with many of the criticisms levelled against her unjustified and rooted in underlying prejudices. These narratives perpetuate harmful stereotypes and biases, and Dr. Schola has been a vocal advocate in calling out this problematic coverage, challenging the narratives that unfairly target Meghan and shining a light on the systemic inequalities that continue to shape public discourse. Dr. Schola's perspective. Dr. Schola Mos Shogbamimu has a background in law, academia, and media, and is a prominent activist and political commentator. As a leading expert on issues of racism and sexism, Dr. Schola has become a fierce advocate for Meghan, the Duchess of Sussex. Drawing on her deep understanding of systemic biases, she has consistently countered the often skewed narratives perpetuated by the media about Meghan. Her impassioned calls for equity and justice have sparked fiery debates as she relentlessly works to dismantle the biases against Meghan. For sure, we need more people like Dr. Scholler who are willing to speak the truth about what Meghan faced. Joining the royal family was no easy feat for Meghan. As a biracial woman, she faced a barrage of racism and sexism from the British media and public, who seemed intent on tearing her down at every turn. Navigating the intense public scrutiny and the antiquated traditions of the monarchy was a constant challenge, and Meghan often found herself at the centre of fiery debates as she pushed back against the unjust narratives surrounding her. Despite the immense pressure and criticism, Meghan remained resilient, using her platform to amplify important causes and advocate for marginalised communities. Her experience underscores the deep-rooted biases and inequities that still plague the institution of the British monarchy and the ongoing work required to create a more inclusive and equitable environment for all. Truth is, Harry and Meghan are hard-working and they are involved in so many initiatives with which they generate income. On the other hand, we have William and Kate, who are two lazy royals filling their pockets with money from taxes. Harry and Meghan are a power couple. Leave them alone. Meghan's relationship with other members of the royal family has always been the subject of much scrutiny and debate, with William, Charles and Camilla chairing discussions about their kids Archie and Lilibet's colour. Racism tensions within the institution appear to be palpable. Evolving attitudes and responses to Meghan's position and influence have led to what we all know was and is disproportionate scrutiny and criticism. Dr. Schola has been a vocal advocate, arguing that Meghan has faced unfair treatment from the moment she was introduced into the family as Harry's partner. Public reactions and responses. The public discourse surrounding Meghan has been highly noted, with strong opinions expressed on the monarchy's unethical practices, or rather, failures to protect one of their own. What I know is, with what Meghan faced, it would not be fair for anyone else out there to go through the same level of torture from people you call your family members. It is traumatic and depressing to go through it all. The feeling of isolation, feeling like an outcast, all resulted in the Sussexes being overwhelmed by the immense pressures of life at the toxic cage and the reason they decided to move away. Many have staunchly defended Meghan, arguing that she has faced scrutiny as a member of the royal family. Dr. Schola has been at the forefront of these conversations, and many other countless friends, radio and TV hosts, and even some correspondents from the institution, countering narratives that they believe unfairly, target Meghan, and highlighting issues of racism, sexism and media bias. The intensity of these debates reflects the deep-seated societal tensions and also the institution's failures.
Broader Conversations on Diversity and Inclusion As the public discourse around diversity and inclusion continues to evolve, it is crucial to recognise the importance of representation and visibility. Marginalised communities have long struggled to have their voices heard and their experiences validated. By amplifying diverse perspectives and elevating underrepresented narratives, we can begin to address the Sussex story, realising the systemic biases and inequalities that have persisted for far too long. This is not merely a matter of political correctness, but a fundamental aspect of creating a more just and equitable society. The way forward. Promoting fair and responsible media coverage is crucial in addressing the systemic issues Meghan has faced. By fostering greater understanding and empathy, we can bridge divides and encourage meaningful dialogue, especially when we want to talk about Harry and Meghan. Ultimately, advocating for tangible change, whether through policy reforms, industry standards or grassroots initiatives, is the only way to dismantle the deeply rooted biases that have so unfairly targeted Harry and Meghan. It will take sustained effort, but the path forward is clear. Let us all work tirelessly towards a more just, equitable society. Thank you guys for watching. I'm your host, Tyler Audrice. Goodbye.